Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explore, we're going to take a look at damping. So damping is uh, this sort of uh, effect where one thing doesn't go quite as um, fast or to the other thing right away, but rather slowly goes there. Isn't that nice? And if we refresh this, refresh, we're wiggling. And uh, while we wiggle, I'll refresh, I'm not even doing that, it wiggles, and it applies the damping, and then I can pick it up and uh, practice the damping as well. So let's take a look at the code behind this. So I'll just close that down. I'll be looking at this in Atom right here. And uh, here is the Browser Plus, which opens right up in Atom next to it, so we can see that. So we're bringing in CreateJS and Zim. Uh, damping is an equation that just says go um, go 0.1 percent of the way there. Don't actually go to the final thing, but you've got to run that over and over again. So we run damping in a ticker, and uh, that way, as I, as I move, this inner circle is only going 0.1 of the way to where it's going, or 0 0.01 or whatever uh, damping amount you might want to go. And eventually it'll get there, but um, not right away. And the smaller the number that you're using there, the slower it will get there. So we can adjust the damping as we go. So it's one of the basics. Uh, we have a damp equation that is inside of Zim. Uh, well, it's actually a damp class. Let's go on down. We're, we're loading up a Zim frame here. This was for the code pen purple and green <laughs> challenge. <laughs> Hence, we've, uh, we've made it purple and green, uh, although I use purple and green quite a lot <laughs> anyway. So it was funny to get a challenge like that. Uh, you probably didn't even think anything was out of the ordinary. <laughs> Zim colors. <laughs> right. Uh, so we come on, we get a stage, we are making a label of damping there and an outer circle. We're dragging that, but as we drag it, if we didn't put the on top false, this is a general explore right now. We're just uh, taking a look at some features in Zim, some conveniences, some issues or, or what have you. If I save this now with a, with a drag there, here's what would happen. Uh, I, I didn't do that. Now I'm picking it up. So as soon as I pick this up, bump. you see how that goes on top of the other circle, which is still here. It's purple, but we can't see it anymore. And this circle has gone up on top. So to avoid the thing that you're picking up going on top, you can set the on top false. Or possibly you could have put it in its, a container of its own and made sure that that container was at the bottom. And uh, then uh, that would have had the same but there now you can see that we can still see this other circle which is the purple circle down here circle purple has also been cir circle purple has also been centered <laughs> starting in on a tongue twister i guess uh, but before we get to that there's a wiggle as well so we wiggled in the x and the y about the stage width divided by two i would have liked to say wiggle it about circle green dot x so that's where we want to wiggle it about and um, circle green dot y the starting positions the problem is is when we dot these things onto the end of circle green here we're actually dotting them onto the end of this new circle object and it's before all of this stuff is happening before we actually assign it to a variable called circle green so we won't have at this point we won't have access to circle green we would have to drop out of the out of the chaining so we could just chain this stuff here and then we could say circle green dot wiggle twice and we'd have access to circle green because we've ended the assignment it's assigning it to that and then we're continuing on calling the methods so just watch that when you're in um, when you're in the chaining, you don't have access to the variable to the variable that we're storing that in. Uh, so we just did a calculation. If we're going to be centering this on the stage, it would be the same as locating this at the stage width divided by two, comma, and stage height divided by two, and not bothering centering it. 
Yeah, that would have been fine too, uh, but we do have the handy center. It's just unfortunately we can't use the X and Y quite yet of the uh, circle green <laughs> once it's been centered. So anyway, we're, we're just putting in the X, which would be the stage width divided by 2 and stage height divided by 2. Remember that the circle, when it starts, its X and Y are its registration points in the center there, and its X and or like its origin is also in the center. Uh, but the X and Y then is stage width divided by 2, stage height divided by 2, because the circle's registration point is in the center. So that's where that will be. We're saying wiggle it a minimum of 50 and a maximum of 100 in the X and in the Y. If you only did the X, here's what it would look like. How about this for an explorer? I would say no <laughs> and wiggle it only this way. Of course, we could then drag it any way we want. Unless we put uh, on the drag, we could put a boundary on the drag and specify only uh, no height on the boundary. And then we'd be wiggling it only in the X and Y like that too. However, I, I wanted it in both the X and the Y, so we have to run the wiggle twice. And then the minimum amount of time is 0.2 seconds. Remember, ZoomCAD is in seconds now. So uh, minimum amount of time, 0.2 seconds to 0.4 seconds. So that's a fairly quick wiggle. And for how long? So I don't usually include the total time. Usually when I wiggle, I wiggle forever, or I can turn off the wiggle when something happens. But in this case, I just wanted to uh, a demonstration wiggle. So here it is. Demonstration wiggle a, a little bit, 1.5. Note, we would have to do a call or figure out when that wiggle is finished. I think if we set it to 1.5, we would just do a timeout at 1.5. And in that timeout, we could animate it back to the center. But I didn't bother. I, I think it's it's all right. It wiggles a bit. I'll just leave it wherever it lands. It's, it's roughly in the center. <laughs> you know, whatever. You can pick it up from there. Note as well that if you pick up while it's wiggling, you're good. It, it doesn't try and conflict there. That's because Zim automatically for wiggle and for animate will remove the wiggle in the animate if you start to drag something. So if you don't want that to happen, then you would have to say remove tweens false or is it like, I think that's what it is with drag. I think you can do it with wiggle too. What was that parameter called? Allow tweens. Allow tweens true. So uh, yeah, it used to be remove tweens false. Then we decided, uh, wait a minute, that's a double negative. Um, so a while back, way back in Zim, we adjusted that to allow tweens, the positive side of things. So allow tweens true is what you would have to set if you wanted it to keep on animating as you drag it, which usually you don't want to do because it would be conflicting with X and Y. However, there might be other properties that you're animating that you want to continue to um, animate. All right, well, there's the green circle being uh, picked up. Here's the purple circle. I thought that initially maybe the purple circle would get in the way of the picking up the drag, but it doesn't seem to. If it, if it ever does get in the way, you can say no mouse to it, and that will, that will mean that it will ignore the mouse completely. I suppose if, I, if there were another event on it, then it would get in the way of, of that. Or even an empty event. So if we said circle.purple. <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> as much as I want it to be. Circle purple. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, dot on. And uh, mouse down. Probably mouse down, I think, would be what we need to... Um, sort of stop the drag from happening. And then we put in an arrow function here with nothing in it. And let's see what happens. Okay, so there we go. And now you see that? I can't I can't drag the circle through the purple circle. So the purple circle itself has an event on it. Oh right here. Has an empty event. Nothing nothing going on. It just is doing nothing as and it won't let me drag through that purple circle. That's what I thought was going to happen. And if that's the case, then you would say no mouse. Uh, and then uh, we can drag through it because it ignores any mouse events on, on the purple circle. Anyway, we seem to be fine without any of these things. Damping. So now we've gotten to the damping. Yay! That's the part of the Explorer we want, huh? Um, 
And so on the damping, let's see, beep, boop, beep, beep, boop, beep, beep. and what have we got? We have to damp both in the X and in the Y. And if we don't say where we want the damp to start, there's a couple ways we can do that. Oopsies. If we don't say where we want the damp to start, here's what happens. Refresh. Did you see that? It came in quickly there, didn't it? So what happens is it assumes the damping is at 0, 0. It puts the ball up here and then damps it towards where, where it's supposed to be damping it to. So the, the, uh, I mean, I, I think you can see it well enough, but perhaps we could change this from purple to just temporarily to red. Here we go. Are you ready? So the red ball damps in from there. Looks like an olive, doesn't it? <laughs> shake up that olive, James Bond. Uh, shaking not stirred? Yeah, I guess so. He probably had an olive in his martini. Never thought about that. Is it neat? He's shaking. Vodka martini, shaking not stirred. No olive. <laughs> Hold the olive. What, what do they say when they... Anyway, whatever. Um... So we had though a purple circle in here, and anyway, we so we don't want the damping to do that uh, right down here. That means it, it starts off by default at zero. So we can put in where we want the starting position to be there, or indeed you can say damp x dot immediate, and then tell it uh, circle. Can't even spell circle. There's too many U's around here. Circle dot, circle purple <laughs> dot X, and uh, same with the Y. But this is sort of like a two-step process. We don't necessarily want to do that. This is saying, hey, go immediately to there. I hope this works. Yeah, that worked. Um, that says go immediately to there. And you can use that anytime you want. Right now we're using it right at the beginning, but if we're going to use it right at the beginning, we may as well pass in to the damp where we want to start. The next parameter is how much we want to damp. Anyway, just before I get to the next parameter, this can be used at any time. So um, sometimes you pick something up and drop it, and then you want the damping to start from there. Then you might have to make it immediate just as you drop it, call the immediate. Otherwise, the damping might get confused. Uh, so that's one of the you know tricky bit about damping sometimes. So here we are damping with that, and we're back to yay working again because we told it the damping to start right in the middle. Uh, now as I pick up the outer circle there, that's the effect of the default damp. We can change the default damp though. If we say one, that means it will won't have any damp. And you see how it's locked right on there. So as I pick this thing up. We may as well not have even used damping. Could have either put the circle right in the other circle or said just set it to the exact x and y with no damping. So there's basically no damping. Um, so we're putting in a number between 0 and 1 here. If we put in, well, if we put in 0, it won't move at all. If we put in 0.5, that's hardly damp. That's still quite fast. And let's see uh, how this works. See, I, I can't can't really tell the effect, but if I try and throw it around, I see a slight delay on that, but you know, not much. I believe the default is 0.1. That looks about how, how it was when we came in, but we can slow that down. Say we were damping some elephants, we were slowing it down to 0 0.01, and here's what it looks like. Now, it takes some time, doesn't it, to get there? It's like pushing the elephant. Come on! The eclipse of the moon. And it'll get there eventually. <laughs> so that's uh hey, 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 catch me if you can. That's a, that's a little bit um, over damped, we'll call it. So there you go. That's um how how does the damping now work? We great, we set up these damp X and damp Y, but uh, it's down here, it's in a ticker that it's uh, that this stuff is actually happening. We're saying Put the circle, purple circle, at the location of, if we just said the green circles X and the green circles Y, that would be the undamped version. So there we go. I'll try it now, and it's, it's back to right at the same location. So we're in a ticker, first of all. Uh, what we do now, here, I'll rebuild it rather than uh, undo. 
what we do now is we say take the, the this is the value that we want to head towards but we want to use the damped converted version of that so we say damp x like this dot convert we use the convert method and what that does is it converts this absolute or this x value this final destination value that we want it converts it to a damped version so like point 0.1 of itself basically and it, and it applies that location rather than um, the the x the real x the final x so that's it we use the damp object that we made so here's us making a damp object from the damp class and we use the convert method to convert and these two steps setting up a damp and converting is easier than actually applying the damping equation which is a real twisty thing it's it's a self-referential it sort of applies it back to itself and it's difficult to remember how to how to do that it's a bit of a mind twist uh, you can go ahead and look at the damping in in zim you can look at anything you want in zim uh, it's open source and the way to do that would be to go to a browser which i don't have so i'll just open this up in a browser quickly and then go to the docs of zim and type in damp here there's the damp and scroll on down to the bottom of any of the zim things and hit view right here view and then here's the equation right here. The last value is equal to this value plus the desired value minus this value times the damping coefficient. So it's really not all that hard. <laughs> it's just it's just hard to remember which which order to do things in and stuff. Like that. <laughs> right? So all we've done is just wrap that little function in a damp class and then we call the convert um, the convert method on it. To do that. All right, there you go. And did we damp the other side? So now we need to damp this side. Do you remember how to do that? Where this is the y. So we take a look. Here's our damp y object right here. We would start with that damp y dot convert, and then we convert that value that we could have used, the hard-coded value or whatever, the, uh, it's, it's not an absolute value, but the final value, we convert that to a damped version of that, and we're back to back to working with damping. Yay! Uh, damping is similar to easing. Easing does the same kind of thing. Easing applies an equation to not uh, go immediate, not go linearly to a value, but rather uh, head on a, you know, on a an equation, a sine wave, or whatever it is, a quad, or a quint, or a bounce equation. And so it's along the same lines. It tries to make uh, make motion uh, more natural. Uh, we have some damping built into things like sliders. So if you want, you can turn the damping on in a slider. And then it will, um, as you do the slider, it won't go immediately to where the slider value is. It will go to a damped version. You could have done that yourself with damping, but uh, we just found it handy sometimes to have that damping. It makes uh, if you had a slider that was that made your page go up and down, like this thing right here, the scroll bar. Instead of going directly to where the scroll bar is, like this, if you have damping, it kind of heads there slowly. It's like it's re you know, it's like moving a page for you slowly. It's a lovely effect on on a slider. It may not be the most practical effect. I don't think I would want that effect as I'm editing here. I, I want to go fast and directly there. But for um, some uh, you know more presentation type pages, uh, damping your slide or damping your scroll bars, slider scroll bar, whatever. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, this is just a scroll or a slider. Yeah. But um, anyway, there you go. There's some information on damping. Damping can make things look, um, look more organic and beautiful. And we've made it easy for you to apply it in Zim. So uh, there you are. This has been an Explore, a Zim Explore. And I am Dr. Abstract. Hopefully uh, that was fun for you. A nice, a nice, simple one, straightforward one. We've been doing some complicated explorers lately. But there's a nice, simple one. And you can check it out on CodePen as well, uh, or in the Explorer directory. But on CodePen, uh, you'll find it. I'll put the link in the, in the uh, YouTube video down below.
discussion down below. Cheers! <laughs>